Good evening and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints on this day called Monday Thursday, the last night as recorded in scripture of Jesus' life with his disciples. Our service tonight is traditionally that of foot washing and a remembrance of the last supper they shared together. Because of COVID restrictions, there will not be a physical foot washing as part of our service tonight. Our service concludes as we remove all the ornamentation from the church and ends in darkness. So we welcome you and a reminder as well that all of our services throughout Holy Week and through Easter Sunday will be posted online. Typically they're uploaded about 15 minutes following the conclusion of the service. Tomorrow's Good Friday service will be at noon Holy Saturday, the Easter Vigil begins at 8 o'clock here in the cathedral. Easter Day, our services at 8.30 and 10. We'll now hear a choral introit.
This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the first of our scripture readings. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I had also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give you instructions when I come. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to be betray him. And during the supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have sent for you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are masters greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I've brought something with me tonight that has special meaning for me, but may seem very odd to you. It is a skillet, a cast iron fry pan. Granted, it's somewhat unique because it's square instead of being round. But that's not what makes it special for me. It holds meaning and significance for me because of the memories embedded in its hard iron. For it's more than a skillet more than an instrument of cookware. This is a portal to another time and place, a place I sometimes dream of even now, decades later. For this is a mountaintop in Vermont. 
This is rolling over on hard ground or a lean-to floor, cocooned in a sleeping bag. This is waking up as a child on a chilly morning. This is fresh, crisp mountain air and a cold nose. This is the sound of wide, expansive silence, a silence punctuated by the snap and crackling of a campfire. This is the smell of coffee wafting from the spout of an aluminum pot with a crystal-like glass knob on the top rocking gently on the grill. This is the smell of bacon sputtering in this very pan. This is peering out with squinting eyes on a new day. This is the image of my mother bent over the flames and smoke. This is my childhood. This is me. What is it or what would it be for you? What not only holds memory for you, but has a bit of you embedded within it? An object, a place, a person? For those who read the Harry Potter series, the dreaded he who must not be named, had portioned parts of his very soul into a variety of or objects, horcruxes they were called, ordinary objects, in the hopes that he would live forever. There's a delightful poem by Billy Collins, who was born and grew up in Manhattan, in which he recalls vacationing as a child in Canada. The poem is titled simply, Canada, and it is a recollection of memories. Memories that are triggered when he steps into a canoe in another time, in another place, and instantly sees before him a bookcase that was filled with the books he read as a child while on those trips. The final stanza of the poem reads, O Canada, I have not forgotten you, as I kneel in my canoe, beholding this vision of a bookcase. I pray that I remain in your vast, polar, North American memory. You are the paddle the snowshoe, the cabin in the pines. You are Jean de Brébeuf with his martyr's necklace of hatchet heads. You are the moose in the clearing and the moose head on the wall. You are the rapids, the propeller, the kerosene lamp. You are the dust that coats the roadside berries. But not only that, you are the two boys with pails walking along that road, and one of them, the taller one, minus the straw hat, is me. Memories can be warmly nostalgic. Memories can also be painful. I know that. We come together this evening to recall in heart and mind the events that occurred on Thursday of what the church calls Holy Week, the last week in the life of our Lord. This night would be the last time they would dine together, though they didn't know it then. That's the other power in memory. Memories can be the anchor that keeps us from drifting out of control when life hits us with a wave we never saw coming. They gather on this night to participate in what is called a Seder meal, one of the highlights of Passover week. The Passover festival, of course, had been done for centuries before Jesus ever came on the scene. It commemorated that time when the Jews were in bondage in Egypt. Moses warned Pharaoh to let his people go, but Pharaoh hardened his heart. So God sent a shadow of death over the land of Egypt. But to those who committed themselves to God, for those willing to launch out into a journey of faith into the unknown, God's judgment passed over their homes. Thus, the epic Passover was given birth. The exodus from slavery to freedom began. 
And from that day to this, Passover is remembered not just with a wistful looking back. It is relived in story, in action, in faith. It stretches back through the portals of time to remind them and us that they are connected to this story, that this story is their story, and it is our story. That is why Jesus and his followers, along with thousands of Jewish pilgrims, had come to the holy city for this week to remember, to give thanks, to awaken again the hope of a new exodus, ushered in by a long-awaited prophesied Messiah. For one day the chains of slavery, now experienced under Roman rule, would be broken. And one day this promised land and they would be free again. The Seder meal itself was a gathering rich in history and symbolism, reminding the Jews of the suffering of their forebears and the power of God to deliver. Along with the lamb, the bread, the wine, an applesauce was eaten to remind them of the brick mortar and the fact that they were forced to make bricks with no straw. A bitter herb eaten to remind them of the bitterness of their captivity. It was this Seder meal that the disciples were partaking of that night in the upper room. You know the expression, actions speak louder than words. That's what this night is about. When the actions take on a new and powerful significance. This strange name that we use to identify this night, Monday, Thursday, is believed to be a Middle English corruption of the Latin word mandatum, or commandment. In John's Gospel account that we heard Jesus takes a towel, a basin, and a jug of water and begins to wash the feet of his followers. And they are strangely uncomfortable with that. I don't think it's because they were uncomfortable having their feet washed. That happened whenever they went into a home as a guest. But Jesus was doing what a servant would do a nameless, faceless subordinate whose lot in life was to do their bidding, someone you could easily keep at arm's length physically and emotionally. But here is no lowly household servant. This was a man they held in the greatest esteem. He knew their innermost thoughts, their very being. Jesus was one whose charismatic nature both drew them in and distanced them with puzzlement. As he kneels before them this night, once again he slips out of their grasp of understanding and definition of who he truly is. And Jesus senses that discomfort and wonderment and he says, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. The new commandment, the new mandate Jesus lays before them this night is this, love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. The actions speak louder than the words. We can speak of love, but until that love takes on form and substance, it remains an abject, abject concept. And that's why Jesus knelt before them this night, so that love might have a name and a face for them and for us. And so a simple towel and basin become symbols of loving service. Jesus himself becomes embedded in that jug and basin. Memory is wrapped into that towel. And they can never see those simple household items in the same way again. At the conclusion of that meal, Jesus added two more symbols. He took a simple bread loaf and broke it and shared it with them. And in words that perhaps in that moment, but certainly in days and years to come, sent shivers through them, even to this day. 
he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Then he took a cup, filled it with wine. In Jewish custom, he might raise his cup as a thanksgiving toast to God. But again, the symbol is transformed. He took that cup and raised it to his own lips, drank from it, then passed it to each of them, saying, drink, all of you, from this cup. For this is my blood which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Thus was born this night the new Passover, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, a word that literally means thanksgiving. Out of the experience of an ancient Jewish custom comes a call to revision our relationship with God and with one another. We gather here this night, thousands of years later, to give thanks for the sacrifice that Jesus offers of himself. He becomes the new Paschal Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. We gather this night in thanksgiving for the untold blessings of a God who forgives us, restores us, journeys with us, and calls us to join in the creative act of making all things new. This night is not about brushing the dust off some aged scrapbook of what once was. It is about waking up to the coffee and smelling the bacon as if for the first time in a long, long time. A towel, a basin, a broken loaf of bread, a cup of wine, a gathering of unsure followers. It is his story. It is our story. It is your story. This new commandment, this mandate, is offered as a challenge and an invitation to me and to you to live the gift that is embedded within us. Love one another as I have loved you. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. We pray for Linda, our primate, Sandra, our diocesan bishop, and for Paul, our dean and rector, and for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. We pray to you, Lord. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, and the sick, especially Patricia, Ed, Joe, Pat, David, Douglas, and Ian, and for all who suffer, for refugees, for prisoners, for those being persecuted by their own governments and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. For all whom we have injured or offended, 
we pray to you, Lord. For the grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. As we offer these gifts, may we offer ourselves in service of the one who offered himself for us, as we pray. Father, we spread this table to remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Accept all we offer you this day. Bind us together in his love and in the love he has commanded us to bring. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord God, our Creator. Holy God, lover of creation, we give you thanks and praise, for in the ocean of your steadfast love, you bear us and place the song of your spirit in our hearts. When we turn from your love and defile the earth, you do not abandon us. Your spirit speaks through Hulda and Micah, through prophets, sages, and saints in every age to confront our sin and reveal the vision of your new creation. Joining in the song of the universe, we proclaim your glory. Gracious God, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ to share our fragile humanity. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you open the path from brokenness to health, from fear to trust, from pride and conceit to reverence for you. Rejected by a world that could not bear the gospel of life, 
Jesus knew death was near. His head anointed for burial by an unknown woman, Jesus gathered together on this night those who loved him. He took bread, gave thanks to you, break it, broke it and gave it to his friends saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we gather at this table in response to his commandment to share the bread and cup of Christ's undying love and to proclaim our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Breathe your Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the universe, upon these gifts that we bring to you, this bread, this cup, ourselves, our souls and bodies, that we may be signs of your love for all the world and ministers of your transforming purpose. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, creator of all, and we bless your holy name forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We break this bread, communion in Christ's body once broken. Let the church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.